Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.15, an Eagle Dynamics F-16C Viper module. Welcome to Addendum 1, updates to the air-to-air -air radar symbology. It's been a little while since I did the original tutorial on the air-to-air -air radar modes and the, uh, the queuing of missiles using the radar. And since then, some of the symbology has been updated to be more realistic, and uh, you've got some additional functionalities available to you. Uh, so I thought this would be a good time to go over all of that stuff in this addendum. So, without any further ado, let's jump into the cockpit and have a little look at some of this stuff. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause the simulation very quickly. I'm going to go over some of the elements that we now have uh, in both the HSD and the FCR. Uh, you can see I've got both of those displays up just now. So the first thing to call out, I think, are the data link symbols. Uh, here you can see on the HSD I've got a bunch of data link symbols. These are being provided by uh, an AWACS aircraft on my coalition. And um, probably unsurprisingly, uh, if you've used the data link on other aircraft, you'll find that friendlies are green and circular and enemies are red and triangles. There are some additional types, though, that can appear on the data link. White symbols are unknown. Uh, yellow symbols are ambiguous. And then you've got the, the green and the red that we see here. The other thing to note is that non-filled symbols, so, for example, if I focus down on the HSD here, um, these filled symbols here, these four enemies and these two friendlies, they're filled because they're what's called correlated. So that means I'm receiving them both over the data link, but also my radar can see them. So I can confirm you know, their position and so on. Uh, this one here is not filled, uh, and that's because my radar doesn't see it. I only have this target information being provided by the data link, not by the radar. Uh, also note that you get altitudes in thousands of feet. So these, this guy's at Angels 20, these guys are Angels 19 and Angels 20, uh, and so on. Um, and the other thing to note is that you have this stem showing direction of travel. If we jump over to the FCR, same information is represented there. Although in the case of RWS, you also see the RWS symbology underneath. Uh, so we still have the bricks that we have in RWS presented here as well. Um, if I go ahead and unpause, and let's flip this to TWS, uh, the symbology changes a little bit again. Let's just pause it. In TWS, there are no bricks, uh, or at least none visible just now. And also, we can see uh, there's a dot in the middle of this left-hand friendly. That's because he's a contributor to my data link. So actually, the, the stuff that I can see right now is coming from this particular aircraft with the dot in it. And if I bring my, my range out here, I can see... That I've got this data link contributed a uh, track, but it's not currently visible on the radar. So that's what that's all about. Let's jump over to the HSD and let's take a little look at a uh, uh, primary uh, data link track. Uh, if I make the HSD my sensor of interest, move my cursor. Note, by the way, if I pause this again, I can see my radar cursor here as these brackets, but I also have an HSD cursor available in the HSD and it shows up as this cross. That's what I'm actually moving. If I move it over this aircraft and press TMS forward short, that puts a circle around him, and that makes him now the primary data link track. So that data link track is always shown, uh, whether or not uh, I'm kind of locking it with the radar or not. Uh, and if I come to the right here, I've got a dotted line showing me where it is. Keep in mind, radar tracks show up as a solid line uh, if they're not within the HUD's field of view, and the the PDL sorry, the PDLT shows up as a dotted line, and then once it's in my HUD's field of view, it's a hexagon, and again, we confirm the altitude to that target. Uh, in addition, if I have my helmet-mounted sight turned on, which I currently don't, let's uh, boot that up. Go. Yep. Whenever it's in the field of view of the, uh, the helmet-mounted sight, again, we've got a dotted line showing me where that is. Uh, and if I manoeuvre so this guy's not in my HUD anymore, but he's in my helmet, I will then see him via the helmet. And there he is. So again, it's just a hexagon, and I have the confirmed altitude. So that's a really nice... Um, that's really nice for situational awareness, having that there. Okay, let's go ahead and go in air-to-air -air master mode. Let's long press nose wheel steering and get our AMRAMs. 
and let's do display management switch right to flip this back to uh, the HSD. Uh, we're now going to go ahead and take a little look at the changes to the dynamic, uh, the, the, the DLZ uh, for the for the AMRAM. So let's uh, TMS up short to get this guy bugged, and I'm now going to pause, and we'll see that there are a couple of small changes now to the to the DLZ. We now have the addition of the R arrow, which is this triangle at the top here. That is the absolute maximum kinematic range of the missile. So that means the missile, if you're within that, which we are just now, the missile could reach the target, um, like physically, it could just get to where the target is now, if we assume that the target does not manoeuvre at all or do anything defensive. Um, so that's just, you know, the, the missile will just barely reach out to that. Usually the triangle is going to be a little bit above our max, because this guy is flying head on at us, they're actually co-located with our max. And then we have the circle down here, this is the pit bull indicator. Uh, so as always, we've got the countdown, so it, you know, keep in mind the, these bits of information are always about if I was to launch the missile right now, uh, of course, subsequent missiles, um, it will give you the information for those, and then you'll get additional lines with regards to time to autonomous and time to impact shown below the DLZ. Um, so, um, yeah, that's the pit bull indicator if I was to fire a missile right now. And you can see that it's just above uh, the no escape range. So let's come out of pause, let's uh, maneuver, and let's push and hold to launch a missile. And I'm going to pause quickly because we're going to get some additional symbology now that we haven't had before. Um, so we now have a little tail on this target. You'll see this uh, yellow block that has appeared on the back of this target. It will always appear on the back, so if the target was going like right to left, the block would appear on the right. Uh, you know, left to right, it'd be on the, the left, etc. So uh, it's, it's always on the back, and a solid block on the back means that there is currently an AMRAM tracking that target. So that basically means that we have data link information between us and an AIM-120 in flight. You'll also notice that we get a second line now for the time to autonomous. The lower number is the time to autonomous for the missile in flight. The one above would be if we launched now. Let's continue. The next thing we're looking out for is when the missile goes autonomous. When the missile goes autonomous, the A will switch to a T for time to impact, and the block on the back of the target will start to flash. That's our confirmation that we're autonomous now. And it actually went away, which is fairly interesting. Normally the block would be retained and it would start to flash. And then the last thing we're looking for, at the predicted time of impact, we should get a red cross on this target. So let's continue inbound. Time to impact two, one. Time to impact should be now. Red cross. So that's confirming that this target should be dead now. Um, of course, it's always possible that the missile misses. Uh, so we need to wait and see what happens. Cross is now gone. It disappears after a period of time. And this guy is continuing to maneuver, which would suggest that he might actually still be alive. So that may not have been a kill shot. So let's go again. That's another missile away. Something else to note, if I pause... Oh, we've actually lost him. Let's unpause. He broke the lock. He actually broke the lock, which might mean he's dead. Uh, nope, but he's just reappeared. Let's STT him. Oh, and there we go. There's something else interesting. Uh, other new symbology we have. You'll see I've now got chevrons over the top of him. Uh, that confirms that he's jamming us. So jamming targets will have chevrons over the top in the event that we still have range information, which basically means our radar has burned through. If we don't have ranging information because we haven't burned through, the chevrons would just appear at the very top line of the radar. So we have azimuth only, uh, but we don't actually have range. This guy, we're close enough that even though he's jamming, I actually have uh, his range. So let's wait there. We get time to impact two, one, zero. Should get a red cross. We didn't get a red cross. Wow, okay. This guy's being very good at evading us. <laughs> so still no red cross. Um, and also we didn't get the blinking pit bull. Now you don't always see the blinking pit bull. I think that can result... Uh, oh wait, actually he has been shot down. Aha, there you go. I thought he was really good at evading us, but in actual fact he was descending towards the earth as a fireball. Okay, let's break that lock. 
and come back up to where we were before. So that's the, the M120 symbology. So like I said, you get a block on the rear which is solid, and that indicates that you've launched against that target. Could be quite useful if you have a formation of aircraft that you're firing uh, multiple missiles towards. That block will flash once the missile goes pit bull, and you'll get a red cross once impact is predicted. Uh, other little tweaks that we now have to the symbology, if you look at the maximum and minimum altitudes on your cursor, uh, above, uh, above the ground now shows up as blue for the lower number. If I point my antenna down a bit and it intersects with the ground, the number now turns red. That's a nice little way of figuring out that you've <laughs> pointed your antenna a little bit too low. We now have DTT in range while scan, which we didn't have before. Let me go ahead and demonstrate that to you. Let's come around and take a look at this formation of four aircraft. And let's bump up my range because it's too low. There they are. So now in RWS, when you have a target bugged or in situational awareness mode, you now have the option to specify a secondary. Now this works in basically exactly the same way as it does for the GF-17. Uh, where you can have two targets and flip-flop between them. It's also very much like the system targets that you have uh, in TWS in the F-16. So I'm going to go TMS forward. I've now got my bugged target. I'm going to choose another one and TMS forward again, and I now have my DTT. If I press TMS right, I can flip-flop between these two targets. Uh, let's go ahead and demonstrate uh, an AIM-120 launch against these, because that's probably quite a good way of doing this. Let me just check. Do I still have two missiles? Yeah, two MRMs on board still. So let's go ahead and intercept these. Let's get some speed on. And I'm going to turn uh, to continue to, to keep them within my radar's field of view. Just getting into our max now. Inside our arrow. I don't know why our arrow is below our max. Our max here, but anyway. Okay, they're in no escape. I'm going to launch. You saw that the block flashed for a moment and it went away. I don't know why that is. TMS right. And launch another. That's all my AMRAMs gone. And neither of them is showing a block against it. <laughs> I don't know why that is. This normally works. Yeah, I actually <laughs> I practiced this a little bit before. But in any case, um, you get the idea. Another thing to note, uh, you may have just noticed that, uh, when a target that you have bugged or in DTT comes within 5 nautical miles, it automatically transitions to an STT, because the assumption is going to be that you're, you're going to enter a dogfight now. So that's another uh, fancy new feature you've got in the radar uh, in the more recent versions. What else? Um, RWS now has implemented memory mode. Uh, so even after you lose a target in RWS, it will actually hang around for a little bit longer. And this also applies when you're in STT. You, if, if you've missed your, your three hits or whatever it is you've got the radar set for, it doesn't immediately dump the target. It predicts it for a short period of time after loss. Um, and the other thing is now in STT, you have an aspect direction. So when you have somebody locked up in STT, rather than just showing degrees off the nose, it now says degrees L or degrees R to let you know if it's degrees to the left or to the right off the nose. And that is pretty much all the new symbology that you have and all the new functionalities that you have in the radar. It's, uh, it's becoming really quite advanced at this stage. You can do quite a lot of cool stuff with it. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much it. I hope that you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. And I'll see you all next time. Take care.